Hey everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMopars.com. It is Sunday night, a little bit after 9, about 9.20 actually. And the reason I'm out here so late is because I picked this up at the post office today. It arrived yesterday and I uh, didn't want to go get it because we were filming a ton of videos, trying to get caught up, cleaned up, and get some stuff done in the shop. Uh, I had to run an errand down to work, so I went ahead and grabbed it. Plus, I'm going to go ahead and unbox it for two reasons. Number one, there's a tool in here that I picked up for work that I need to take with me tomorrow morning, if I can go, because uh, there is supposed to be some really nasty hailstorms come through here. 5 and 7 a.m. is currently where they're tracked through, I guess, the first two lines. And uh, that's it's strange for us. Typically, severe weather is, you know, 3 p.m. and later. Uh, typically, like, 4 to 9 type of us time frame. So early morning hail, uh, hopefully it's not too bad, but I want to get this done and behind me. Uh, a couple of things, little updates for you, the Jador Rescue Knife. Uh, for what I've done, which has largely just been, you know, cutting boxes and tape, has been really nice so far. And with the uh, free sticker packs that you get when your order exceeds $100, this is a little Jador wooden stand that we picked up a while back. And I thought to myself, you know, that'd be kind of cool if we put that one to use. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. I think the color scheme there uh, looks right at home. Jador puts no branding on it, uh, which I guess is, you know, some people prefer it that way. Some people probably like to see it sort of like burned in type of a thing. But uh, the sticker fits like a glove, uh, filled it in nicely. You can space it about an inch and, you know, a half inch or so. And uh, I, think it, I think it looks nice. And if you hate the way this looks, you can flip it around and just have the top side, you know, show. Uh, similarly, you know, if you've got it like on a corner or something, you can have both sides available. But if you were ever wondering, you know, if you've gotten to a point you've accumulated so many sticker packs and you're like, what do I do with them? Every once in a while, you come up with a good idea. So uh, this one's going to be hopefully short and sweet because I've still got a Sunday's like cleaning day. I've got to vacuum, uh, wash my sheets, get the sheets out, all that stuff. So uh, got to beat. I think we have a chance of the storm starting at one. So. Anyway, let's do this one the old-fashioned way, shall we? All right here, said sticker pack. Once, oh, 11 pieces. I thought it was a 10-piece set. Hmm. Anyway, uh, if you want to buy this separately, you can totally do that. Uh, I think if you just look for KCT pack, as you see there at the top, it'll pull it up. $9.99 is a price. Or if you simply spend $100, $50 gets you free freight, $100 gets you the free sticker pack. Not hard to do that, particularly if you're saving up, uh, you know, a couple items you've had on your hit list there. Now, conveniently located at the top are bit o thinks. If you're scoring at home, we have number 8 and number 11. This one looks like it's titanium coated again. Are you ready for the reveal? We've got number 19 of 24. This is a T20 by 25 millimeter uh, Torx with the Dura insert bit. Very cool. Uh, of course, it's from Viha. If you're interested in it, they're part number 71578. So, no duplicates so far. Three out of 24 bits acquired. That means we're, uh, what, uh, need seven more sets of three, essentially, to complete it. But there it is. That, again, 19 of 24. And let's just go ahead. Same flyer, again, Vera. They're like the kings of promotions. So, uh, this is the same as last time. They've got, I'm interested in bringing the Jokers in. I just, I don't know, something about getting the four-piece set kind of scares me. I prefer to have, like, something more complete. However, that would let me try them out decently, but at the same time, you almost think you just bring in one if you're going that route. I don't know. I realize they're gimmicky, but I think they would actually serve me well, as I think of, like, suspension and fuel stuff and all the times I've wished I had a third hand. Uh, if you've experienced the Jokers and you've had uh, any feedback, let me know. Uh, let's go ahead and get started here with, I guess, my first ever Hazette tool. And it's probably not one that's super exciting for you. But uh, the part number on it is going to be HZ2131. And it, what do you think it is? You probably can't read that writing, so we'll make it suspenseful. And uh, I'm excited to see it. I've, I've got a plan for this. I'm going to A, use it, but B, we're going to actually do a comparison. So it's packed pretty well. Or at least tightly, man, really tightly. Check that out, though. Kudos to you, Hazette. I like the way that's done already. Feels good in hand. It's wooden. Oh. Lots of bristles. I have a video I recorded when I got my uh, first set of wire brushes in from KC Tool. And I was comparing them to a Mint Craft. I should probably download that and upload it. It was filmed at my desk at work when I was stuck in the office one day. 
and uh, it was pretty thorough. I should probably dig that out, but that's kind of what I have planned here. This is Hazette's spark plug brush. If you think, man, what is, what's the point of that? You know, it's so small. That's why it's small. It's a spark plug brush. We don't need it to have a big profile or a lot of rows. And I'm talking about the bristles right there. There's a ton of them. That is packed really, really good. And the handle, as I mentioned, feels really good in hand. So we've got that one from Hazette now. The price on it. I hope you're sitting down. $7.31. That's a little steep. But it's one of those things. I got the idea in my head and I was like, you know what? We're doing it. So, uh, right here, this one is from Stavilla. Let me see if it's the top or the bottom number we want to go with. If you're going with uh, KC Tool, we'll actually want to use the top number. So, ST741600001. And this is going to be Stavilla's spark plug brush, as you probably guessed. Now let me go ahead and get this guy out. I love the little bags this one comes in. Uh, ooh, that's impressive too. And look, Stavilla, unlike Hazette putting their name on the handle, Stavilla's got it up top. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm excited to try these out. I'll get the uh, two side by side for you here in just a second. But if you haven't determined yet what I'm, what I'm giddy about, we're actually going to do a comparison video between the three, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time here. <laughs> and I think I can get this tool haul done pretty quickly because they're going to have multiple uh, outlets. Now the price on the Stavilla Villa was $360. If we were to double that, we would be at $720, so a Hazette brush is about $0.11 cents more. The Jadora Spark Plug Brush, we paid uh, $3.99 for this one, so again, the Hazette brush is significantly more expensive. This one's actually more expensive than the Stavilla. The Stavilla Wire Brush has been amazing. <laughs> that thing uh, still ticking pretty good here. I should probably get one for work, and that's where they really get abused, and I could kind of get a better feel for it. But just for like Weekend Warrior DIY type stuff here in the shop, uh, it's, it's worth the uh, expense, which isn't much more uh, than your standard ones. That said, the Jador one, we're going to be looking at uh, 648, uh, the part number if you'd want to get from uh, KC Tool, you're wanting GR6532090. And they do have another one that I think is slightly less expensive, but it's got a plastic handle and it is made in China. Uh, this one is made in Germany. The plastic handle one is sort of blue, it looked pretty cool. I uh, might have to bring that one in if people are interested in spark plug brushes, but... Um, this one is the most basic, I can say. Again, I don't want to go into too much detail, but we'll pull them back out here in the recap. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with this now. Uh, and these are going to be, again, for another dedicated video. And if you recall, in our uh, previous video from Viha Tool Hall 3, I believe, that's where I brought in the Ultra Driver on sale with the bike up pliers. And I went with a tradesman, so what I've done to acquire the complete set of halter driver bits, which again are double-sided, uh, we've gone with the industrial bit pack and the technician's bit pack. Now keep in mind, the ultra driver, it's got a magazine capacity of 12, the 13th has to be held in the bit, uh, which you know some people are going to be okay with that, others are like, yeah, it's going to tear my bag or it's going to scuff something up. Bottom line, when you acquire these, you can actually build up whatever combination of bits that you want. And the reason I bring that up again, these are double-sided. They're sp specific to the Ultra Driver. They're not going to be like your standard quarter-inch bits. So uh, the part numbers for these, 77781 is going to be the reload pack for the Technician's Driver right here. And then the other one, 77782, is going to be the reload for the Industrial Driver. Now, th something that worked out really well for me, these were both on sale for $8.98. I think usually they're around $13 or so, depending on where you pick them up from. But as I mentioned in the last video when we took a look at the Ultra Driver, I told you I had seen on Instagram from the official VHA account, someone asked a question about, are they going to do anything to improve the Ultra Driver with, you know, the sleeves breaking off, they're having issues with the O-rings, a lot of people and they basically said they were aware of it and they were working on it and to stay tuned. That's why my advice would be if you've got an Ultra Driver that you picked up on sale or you're hoping to get one while they're still on sale, I believe some of them are, maybe don't buy all of them if that's what your logic was. Maybe pick up one, get the uh, bit packs or one of the bit packs and then wait for the updated driver and uh, pick up, you know, whichever one that you're missing, I think would be the best course of action. So that is probably what I'll do, assuming I like it. 
Uh, but for now, I can basically custom tailor the bits to what I want to do. And each one of them, there is a little bit of overlap in each kit, but each kit actually distinguishes itself from the other. Uh, again, you've got tradesmen, industrial, and technicians. I could spend a ton of time here on it, but we're going to have a dedicated video on it, and it'll be more in-depth and kind of give you the best course of action. Now, speaking of the Ultra Driver, ooh, that is a heavy unit. The yeah, Ultra Driver here, and I tell you what, just in case you haven't seen what's down there on the back side, we're going to do that. When I brought in my Ultra Driver, I didn't do just a standard, I did one of the bundles. They've got one with quarter drive sockets, which that's something I realize I need to order in separately now, is the uh, just adapter for the quarter drive sockets. Any drive socket, obviously, quarter is going to work, but they do have one packaged with sockets on one of their nice rails. Uh, but they do also just offer the standalone piece where you can adapt to running the sockets. So if you're looking to make it a little bit more versatile, that's the way you can go. These suckers right here, I got the standard grip uh, bundled in our Tradesman Ultra Driver and uh, knocked the price down on both of them. It was a screaming good deal. And it turns out I actually really liked the buy cuts. I kind of explained what I did with them at work. Not necessarily cutting a whole lot of stuff yet, uh, but using them to grab into staples on pallets and boxes that the motors come in with. And they worked amazing. Uh, it's the best time I've had getting all those stupid staples out. Uh, not necessarily what they're intended for, and I'm not taking advantage of the extra leverage you would get, but they worked for the job, and they worked beautifully. What I wanted to do in that case, I was so impressed with the bi cuts, I wanted to go ahead and get something from their industrial line that's got the different grips, and uh, if... Hmm. Sounded like one of my friends rolling in. <laughs> but, uh, if this is something that you were interested in, the buy cuts, we're going to, as you might have guessed it, make a standalone video uh, sort of comparing the handle styles, talking more about what they do uh, in particular. If you're curious on the last one, that's why I left that tag on there. It was because I wanted to use it for video purposes. Uh, I'll try to get some of the red paint off of the one I've already used. But if you're interested in this one, we have part number 30936. These are 8 inch. I think that's the only link they're offered in. Uh, official name Super Bi Cut High Leverage Cutters with Button and the Ergo Soft or Industrial Handle. Price on these, I think I got them on sale, but $33.97. I felt like that was a pretty, pretty sweet setup. Again, not going to go into a ton of detail because uh, I've still got a ton to do before the storms roll in. And then we're going to going to come in and do a more comprehensive video on these. This is a heavy pair. It feels heavier than I remember the other one feeling. Now, when I got these, I had the same issue. They're like, they don't want to open. And you kind of have to hit the button to bring them out. And then once you do that, you can kind of articulate them better. I can't... There's no texture on that, but it feels textured, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, but these are finished really nicely. That bent nose pair of VHA pliers I had, I don't know if it's a one-off deal, I don't know if it was like just an oversight in QA or something, but it was not finished uniformly. <laughs> and I've used it, it's not too big of a deal, but you know, on basically enhanced side cutters is I guess what you could call these, you don't want a cheap tool, you want a really good finish. And I've been so impressed with those little guys, that's why we brought these in. But I see no obvious imperfections on this set. Uh, they seem to be ground really good. I'm thinking these are kind of like the uh, flagship of the VHA plier line. So, like I said, don't want to spend a ton of time on this when we're going to do a standalone video. So I'll simply tuck them back in. And if you were cleverly watching the box, I know you probably saw something. And this was just kind of a deal. I used it to get over a threshold. I'd wanted it for a while. I'd never seen it go on sale. And I actually realized it would come in handy since it was smaller. So uh, what I'm referencing is actually from a company we've never brought anything in from. It's from Stabilo. They're a relatively new ad to the KC tool line. And what I picked up right here it is their uh, Pocket Pro Magnetic Level. They make a really cool looking torpedo level, and I nearly bought it, but then I realized that what I was looking at was just the holster for $14.97, because I thought it was weird that that was uh, priced less than this guy. This one was $19.99. Part number for you, if you want to pull it up on KC Tool, SA11901. Once again, retails for $19.99. 
What got me on this one is the fact that I don't have a small, you know, like a decent, if I have a small one, I don't know where it is, but everything I have is like from Empire. Uh, they make a really good level in my opinion. I've not had any issues with them. Some people I don't think like that brand for some reason. Uh, when I was in Home Depot the other day getting stuff for work, they actually had a two-pack, I think for $9.97, which is a really, really good deal. I guess it's a Memorial Day promotion. Uh, one vial had blue, the other had yellow, I guess, for whatever reason. <laughs> it's, uh, I mainly use them, you know, here around the shop when I'm leveling stuff, when I'm like building tables, something structural. And what I'm going to use this one for is for in-the-car stuff. Uh, like I'm planning on doing a lot of custom dash work here coming up and this is going to allow me an easy way to make sure it's square. And with it being a smaller profile, I liked that. I liked the yellow simply for a higher visibility. And I realize that sounds dumb, but I'm talking about, you know, if I leave it in there or something along those lines. Uh, but I think it actually will light up pretty pretty decently now that I think about it, but uh, it's mainly just the smaller profile is, you know, the reason I was able to justify this guy. Also cool, it has the clip on it. Uh, if we were to read this, it's got a 90 degree aluminum angle deviation max of plus minus one degree, and its measurement accuracy is in the normal position. It includes the holster made in Germany. I like the packaging. There's nothing crazy. I just slip it out and we go to town. So the magnet is going to be here on the bottom, and let's just take this knife as our sample. It's probably not a, not a great idea. Uh, and the magnet also clearly on the sides is just going to be covered. That'll keep it uniform, I guess. Or it's only going to be one side. So uh, the one opposite, you know, the logo there, and then the bottom. That's where we're going to have the magnetic capabilities. I think it's going to be good. I think this is going to come in very handy. I'd never seen anyone actually unbox one of these or bring one in. And uh, if you like this, they do offer a bundle with a tape measure. I don't think it's too much more. Would have gone that route, but it was actually a standard tape measure. It wasn't, you know, metric specific, which I was going to bring one in to kind of help people out in the comparison videos and tool hauls. But I tell you what, I've just... Uh, I've kind of got my tape measure game figured out with everything I've brought in and tested. So this little guy, speaking of measurements, let's go ahead and give some rough ones here for you. I would say overall length, we're just a little bit past two and three quarters, which once again, I've got a one or two viewers who always come in and say when I comment, that's a strange measurement, you know, why didn't they just make it an inch and a half? And they say it's because it's metric. And uh, I will let them continue to do the math. So roughly an inch thick. Uh, inch and a half, little past an inch and a half there, and then right there we'll just call that about two and three quarters. So it gives you some rough dimensions if you're interested in this, if you're wanting to see if it's just the right size or slightly too big for some specific application you're thinking of. But uh, I think it looks good and I'm excited to test it out. So on the table here, not super strong. The side with the black trim, I think, pulls a little better, but I think we're down to our final item here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this one out. This is what I need to have with me in the truck to go to work, assuming I can. And uh, I've been opening up around 7, and I thought about getting there early to beat the storms, and I saw that there were supposed to be two lines, and that's kind of kind of where the system's getting messed up for me. But... Uh, this was actually a deal. I emailed Casey Tool and I said, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. <laughs> and, uh, do you have anything that could make that task easier? And uh, I believe it was Chris and uh, this is what he recommended. So we're going to, if I shoot another part of this video, it'll be at work. Uh, that's where these are going to go. And uh, I, I sure hope they work good because they were expensive. <laughs> and if they work for what I'm doing, they're worth every single penny. If they don't work for what I'm doing, I've got a really expensive set of these things. And uh, I would just hope they have a really long life to do mundane tasks. But uh, at work, uh, I get hose in and I have to cut it. It's kind of like a rubber reinforced type of material. And it's a pain. Uh, what I do is what we've always done. We use a fillet knife. And I finally, I think it was last summer... I was bringing some in and I was just, you know, BSing with the lady, you know, that answered the phone, takes the orders, and I was like, hey, 
what do y'all actually use to cut this with? I was picturing, you know, shears or something. I was kind of thinking of like a bolt cutter, you know, anvil type thing. And I was like, I bet they've got something really cool. I wonder if they'd sell one to me or something. And she said that they just use a box cutter. <laughs> and so she was actually impressed by my fillet knife. But uh, it's a deal, you know, the fillet knives, what happens, the back end comes out of the rubber over time. Uh, you kind of you know, have to just saw at it. It's really hard to explain without you seeing it, but uh, if I film a part two or an update on this, I will be at work. Nonetheless, what did he recommend, you ask? Well, it came from Jador, and the part number is going to be GR-911-8520, uh, direct from Jador to be 1104-26. They're Craftsman scissors, 260 millimeters or 10 inches. <laughs> and here they are. Now, what what would something like this run? You're probably asking yourself, right? $93.50. Now, I've had really good luck with everything I brought in from Jadora so far. Uh, there is, again, the information if you care to have it. You do get this little sheath, which I'll try to keep them in there more than likely. Uh, some of the guys will probably be cutting hose and they'll never get back in there. But it also looks like the type of sheath where over time, either the sides are going to blow out or the bottom does. But uh, I'm using some needle nose pliers here to pull a staple out. And if anyone cuts through rubber hose, like if, let me know what you're doing. Uh, Cause our issue is it's not, you know, like fuel line or anything. I mean, this is like discharge hose type of material and we're talking four, six, eight, ten 10 inch, you know, everything in between. Uh, they feel pretty good in hand. Now there's the branding, again, 1104-26, made in Germany. I like the color scheme, it's sort of a lighter blue. Well, the handles are nice, they're not padded by any means. I've got big hands and I actually get in there. One of my personal favorite pairs of scissors, there's actually, I haven't been in there to see if they still make them. Harbor Freight has some pretty good ones. Obviously it wouldn't work for what I'm talking about. Just general purpose. The problem is they always break right there at the joint and then one handle comes off. The remedy I had for that was some Stanley Fat Maxes, and uh, I don't know if they still make them, but they were always kind of just near the tin snips, uh, which the Fat Max tin snips are a big step up from the Harbor Freight tin snips, which are like a one job deal. I was really disappointed in those. But these kind of have a similar design, and I'm just glad I can get my fingers in them. But you can see the posi stop there. We've sort of got quite sure what that would be for. I guess just a, I don't really know what, what purpose that serves. <laughs> like, I don't know if it maybe helps them stand or lay flat. Doesn't seem to extend. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what that is. Maybe it's just casting slag. They don't want to cut off. I don't, <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, it's got, you know, this one I understand having the overlap, but they look to be a pretty good pair of scissors. We've got a nylon lock nut here, and then it's not necessarily a bolt head. It's just kind of got two flats on it, but okay. So that's our fully open. And then as we cut, they're not too hard to articulate. They look good. It's just a question of will they work now? Obviously, I don't think I'm going to be able to come in there on like 8 inch hose and just, you know, lop it all off at once. But if I can come in and just, you know, get started, it's going to be awesome. Uh, also, I think if they do cut, I can't tell you how hard it is to go straight with a fillet knife, uh, let alone a box cutter on this material. Because you got to realize we're not just cutting one side of the material, we're cutting both sides simultaneously. Uh, and if you say just flip it over, that's really hard to do when you've got a giant spool that they come on, <laughs> you know. But uh, this will be my first attempt, and uh, we'll see We'll see if it works good. But uh, for good practice, we've got some packing here. Let's see what, they, what they're able to do here. Are you ready for it? Okay, they can handle paper, so worst case scenario, I can cut my shipping material. Now right here, let's get the edge of the box with the tape. Okay, so they can handle cardboard, and I don't have anything at all similar to what I'm wanting to test. Uh, so I'm going to get out of here, I'm going to go uh, vacuum dust, make my bed, and other exciting things I do on a Sunday night, I know. And uh, get to bed, because I might have to be going to work around like 
4.30 to beat the storms and I guess just park the truck inside if hail comes type of a deal. Uh, I don't know. Last time they had the big torque on and the weather channel came in. We didn't really get anything here, but typically then, you know, whenever they have something again, no one takes them seriously. And it just, you know, baseballs fall from the sky. So we shall see, but it's, you know, that time of year here in Texas. So um, it's, again, it's just very, very weird for us to have anything that early in the morning. You know, rain or thunder every once in a while, that's, that's to be expected. But Typically everything rolls off the mountains and you know, it's like four o'clock uh, And if you have to leave or shut down work early type of thing for hill, you know, it's not the end of the world It's usually right before I just run stuff down to UPS head back home get parked and you know ice falls out of the sky <laughs> so, uh, Chris your reputation is on the line man because if these don't work I'm I've got like an expensive paperweight. They're pretty good you know, it seems based on what we did here, but again, their intended purpose uh, is going to be for the hose. So uh, if anyone knows what I'm talking about or has gone through something similar and you're using a product that works and cuts straight and actually lasts, let me know. And uh, like I said, I'll try to get a follow up on these guys. But uh, we got our Jador scissors. We got our Stabila level. I, you know, I always thought German tour reviews would like bring in a bunch of these, like the torpedoes and holsters and stuff. But uh, if he did, I must have missed the video. But uh, we got those. We got our industrial and technicians bit reload packs for our ultra driver. Showed off our Jador sticker. We've got the uh, pretty, I gotta say, pretty impressive uh, supercuts here from Viha. And we'll also, like I said, have the standalone on those. And then we've got the spark plug brushes. That's right, I told you I'd to bring them all three back out for you. Hazette is labeled on the downside. Uh, Stavilla is labeled here on the business end. And then the Jador unit has no labeling at all. It's also significantly shorter. Uh, bristle counts on the uh, Jador and Hazette, or I'm sorry, Stavilla and Hazette look pretty good. I will come in, like I said, we'll do a dedicated video on those suckers. Uh, so for all my uh, mechanic people out there that are looking for spark plug brushes, uh, which might be a very, very narrow audience, uh, hey, we got something coming. So uh, once again, that is what we brought in this time around. I believe this will be number nine or number 10. And uh, there's currently, as of today, May 19th, there's some Orbis pliers on sale. And I think I might bring them in uh, just because I've always wanted to try them. And they're at that funky angle, I think a 25 degree which I actually think would come in handy for some of the stuff I do in engine bays. So uh, we'll see if they're in stock or not, but that is that. I got to get inside, get back to work so I can shower and go to bed and, you know, see if I'm waking up and able to go to work or, uh, you know, not, not going to go because there's ice falling from the sky. So uh, for everybody that has their severe weather early in the morning, I definitely feel for you. But uh, like I said, we'll see what comes of it. And, uh, Got a lot of standalone videos coming on this, so stay tuned. Once again, our exclusive bit was number 19, so we've got 8, 11, and 19 if anyone wants to start trying to compile a list. And uh, one more time there, putting the sticker pack to work. I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, let me know your thoughts, though. But with that said, I'll quit rambling. As always, thank you so much for watching. These guys are coming with me back into the house, uh, getting loaded up in the truck, and going to get put to work. So. Uh, thanks so much for watching one more thing here let me uh, bring you up with me currently I've got my uh, KC tool banner there I think I'm gonna move it I would have liked to have placed it kind of in line with the Chrysler power one I uh, got that from a car show a couple years ago for uh, getting an award but I've got that one which truth be told I've never used it <laughs> but, uh, it's my better uh, the Harbor Freight ones are what I have everywhere else man those things suck but uh, that was a Husky uh, filter and then a uh, Cobalt regulator. Uh, if I, or it might have been Campbell. I can't remember if Cobalt had one or not. But uh, had those in there. And I'm thinking it might, we might drop it down here or we could possibly reorganize things. I don't know. I'm pretty happy with this setup, what I was kind of building on the wall. But uh, anyway, I told you I would showcase it and I, I don't know. I think we'll probably move it down because it does fit in that void right there so uh, with that said let me know if you've got any thoughts if you've got any questions uh, what your thoughts are on any of these tools if you brought in anything from Stabila how you're liking it uh, what you're doing with all your sticker pack stuff 
And if you have any experience with the Super Cuts, because I think they're turning out to be pretty cool. So, uh, with that said, as always, thanks so much for watching. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And with that said, I will catch you back here for more action from the show.